Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Maggie Howell, and I'm the executive director here at the Wolf Conservation Center. So before we get started, um, just a real quick review. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box and the control panel, and we'll provide time for a Q&A after the talk. Also, there will be a recorded version of this webinar posted uh, within a day or two. So um, if you know friends that want to join but weren't able to, you can let them know they can watch later. Okay, so today we're joined by Tom Gable, who has generously offered to discuss Voyager's Wolf Project and what he and his team are learning from the elusive wolves in the greater Voyager's ecosystem in northern Minnesota. Tom is the project uh, lead for the Voyager's Wolf Project and a PhD student at the University of Minnesota. He's been studying wolves in the greater Voyager's ecosystem since 2014, when he started his master's at Northern Michigan University. Gable is particularly fascinated by wolf fever interactions, and much of his graduate work to date has focused on understanding how wolves hunt and kill beavers, and conversely, how beavers avoid fatal encounters with wolves. Much of Gable's early interest in wolves stemmed from encountering wolf tracks, kills, and encounters with wolves. Uh, or and the occasional wolf, sorry, uh, wolf while exploring wild places around his family's cabin just outside Killarney Provincial Park in Ontario during the winter. Uh, during and after his bachelor's in biology at Hope College in Holland, Michigan, Gable worked as a wolf research technician in Grand Teton National Park and on the Minnesota Wolf and Deer Project in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. His time in the Boundary Waters fostered a deep appreciation and love for the iconic Northwoods of Minnesota. So we're really excited to have Tom join us again this evening. So uh, without any further ado, I think I'll turn it over to Tom. Welcome, Tom. Oops. Can you hear me? There we go. Now we can. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks for having me, Maggie, and thanks to the Wolf Conservation Center for um, organizing this webinar. I am really excited to be able to talk about the work we're doing on the Voyager's Wolf Project, trying to understand um, how wolves are hunting and killing beavers. Before I begin, I need to thank my collaborators on this project, Austin Homkiss, Dr. Joseph Bump, and Dr. Steve Windles, who are all integral part of the Voyager's Wolf Project. And then I need to thank um, a whole bunch of wildlife technicians who help our field uh, work every year through their generous um, time and effort. Without their help, what I'm going to present today simply would not have been possible for us to collect um, because it requires such an intensive field effort. So I'm going to provide a little overview about the Voyager's Wolf Project before I really kind of get into wolf beaver interactions. So just a little background on the project. The Voyager's Wolf Project is a collaboration between the University of Minnesota and Voyager's National Park. And we have been doing intensive wolf research during the summertime, in particular since 2015. Our current project objective is to understand the reproductive ecology and predation behavior of wolves during the summer in the greater Voyager's ecosystem. So the reproductive ecology just refers to anything dealing with wolf pups and raising pups. So during the summer, wolves are doing two main things. They are having pups and raising their pups and then they're hunting and killing prey to feed themselves and to feed their pups. So if we really want to have a detailed understanding of wolves as a species during the summertime, we have to have a detailed understanding of both of these facets of wolf ecology. So if you're not familiar with where the Greater Voyagers Ecosystem or Voyagers National Park is, um, it's here in northern Minnesota, right along the uh, Ontario border. So the northern edge of Voyagers National Park actually borders and looks into Canada. So our work does include um, research in Voyagers National Park, but we also do a lot of work outside of the National Park as well. And so we refer to this whole area as the Greater Voyagers Ecosystem. And the reason that we do a lot of work outside of the park is that there are very few wolf packs that exist solely within the boundaries of the park, as you can see in this map. We really only have two packs that remain primarily in the park year round. But then we also have a lot of packs, are particularly on the southern border, uh, that are sort of straddling that park boundary. So they're going in and out of the park on a regular basis. So if we want to understand 
wolves in and around Voyagers National Park, we have to know what's going on south of the park because those factors undoubtedly impact wolves inside the park. So now I'm going to really kind of get into the topic that I find really fascinating, which is wolf beaver interactions and how wolves have actually figured out how to hunt and kill beavers and then how beavers avoid encountering wolves. So I'm going to provide sort of a really broad overview of what we know about wolf beaver interactions and then sort of zoom into uh, the work we're doing in Voyager's area. So we know that beavers are important prey for wolves in a variety of ecosystems in North America and Europe and Asia. And we know this from a lot of wolf diet studies spanning back to the 1960s, where people have collected wolf scats and looked at what's in them. These studies have shown that beaver can make up to 50% of summer wolf diets in some areas, meaning that beaver are the primary prey of wolves in some ecosystems during the summertime. Outside of that though, um, wolf beaver interactions really have not been very well studied, probably because beavers are not as important uh, socioeconomically as a prey species as say moose or deer. People just don't care as much if wolves are eating beavers and some people probably would be happy if wolves are eating beavers because that then reduces the damage that beavers do to infrastructure and things like that. But overall we really don't know a lot about wolf beaver interactions. And this is somewhat surprising because wolves and beavers co-occur together in a huge area of North America and in Eurasia. So this map shows the area that uh, wolves and beavers co-occur or coexist together and presumably areas where wolves are, are killing and consuming beavers. And you can see that's a large chunk of North America. So the work that I'm going to talk about that we do in the Greater Voyagers ecosystem likely has applications to a very broad area um, not just in North America, but also in Europe and Asia. So if we want to understand how wolves hunt and kill beavers, we have to have a detailed understanding of what beavers are like as prey species so that we can understand how wolves might adapt their hunting strategies to catch beavers. So as many people know, beavers, one of the main ways they avoid predators is they build these lodges, which are these sort of fortified structures that are almost impenetrable. And then they dam up streams and rivers and this creates ponds and bodies of water that then the beavers can live in in relative safety from predators. When beavers do uh, need to go on land, they generally stay really close to water, generally within 10, 20, 30 meters. Um, sometimes they do venture a little bit beyond that, but not far. And the reason for that is so if they encounter a predator when on land, they can quickly get back to water. Additionally, when beavers actually go on land, they don't spend a lot of time on land on their individual trips. So they might go on land for five, six minutes, and then they're going to come back to the water. And they're going to do this over and over again. And this is likely to minimize encountering predators. So when on land, beavers have a few ways that they can detect predators. And probably their main way that they detect predators, I should say, is um, using scent. So that's their most developed sen um, sensory ability. And so they rely a lot on this to sift the air and detect predator odors um, that might indicate a predators around. They do have um, decent hearing, I suppose, but I wouldn't say it's great. It's certainly not great at um, detecting predators from a long distance away. And then beavers' eyesight is really terrible. Um, they are almost practically blind when on land. Um, they have these beady little eyes that um, can't see a whole lot. And, and part of the reason that they have poor vision is that they live in the darkness half the year um, during the winter time when they're locked below the ice in their lodge. But let's say a beaver's on land and it does happen to um, get attacked by a predator. What are its defenses, at least physical defenses? Um, we know that beavers have sharp incisors, which are their two front teeth um, that are powered by really muscular jaws. And so if those teeth bite onto a predator, it could do some serious damage. So that's probably their biggest weapon to escape. Adult beavers would probably rely largely on just their sheer size. So adult beavers can approach 60 pounds, which is bigger than many of the adult wolves that we study in our area. 
And then beavers have this body that's sort of shaped like a football. Um, it's just this really compact sort of ball of muscle and they really don't have a neck. And so if you're a wolf or, or something like a mountain lion or whatever, trying to get a hold of a beaver, it's pretty challenging because where do you grab onto this, you know, big muscular football? So these are some of the ways that beavers are able to sort of avoid or escape potentially predators. And the real goal for a beaver is to get to free yourself from an attacking predator so that you can get back to the safety of water. So what do we then know about wolves and beavers in the greater Voyagers ecosystem? Well, we know that beavers are vulnerable during the ice-free season, which for us is from April till October. We know that beavers can make up to about 42% of wolf pack diets during this time, meaning that beavers are the primary prey of wolves um, during that April to October period in some instances. And we know that individual wolves can kill up to 28 beavers. Um, and this is through our GPS collar work that I'll talk about a little bit more in a bit. But uh, to put 28 beavers into perspective, a typical beaver lodge in the Greater Voyagers ecosystem has five beavers. So um, that means that one wolf removed uh, enough beavers that would constitute five and a half beaver lodges that it would have removed from its territory. And likely the reason that beavers are such an important uh, prey species for wolves is their sheer abundance in the Greater Voyagers ecosystem. So this map here shows all of the active beaver colonies that we identified during our 2018 aerial beaver surveys. And each one of these yellow uh, pins is an active colony. So in total, there are 1,200 of these lodges. And so that's a, a lot of food and beavers out on the landscape. To give you an idea of what this actually looks like, this is a photo I took from the air a couple of years ago during our surveys. And you can see that there's just sort of wetlands interspersed throughout the forest. And each one of these white arrows points to an active beaver lodge. So again, if you're a wolf and you can figure out how to take advantage of this food source, that is a lot of food that could be sort of gleaned off of the landscape. But then the question really is, well, how do wolves go about hunting and killing beavers? When we started our work in 2015, this great book had just come out called Wolves on the Hunt, The Behavior of Wolves Hunting Wild Prey by Dave Meech, Doug Smith, and Dan McNulty. And this book is really a comprehensive review of how wolves hunt all their various prey species. And the book itself is a couple hundred pages long, but the section on beavers was about three paragraphs in which they concluded that there were no actual descriptions of wolves hunting beavers. There were lots of people who had speculated how wolves might do this, but no one had any data on how wolves actually went about hunting and killing beavers. And so this was something that we really set out to try to understand. We wanted to, to not only know how wolves hunt beavers, but we also wanted to understand um, wolf-beaver interactions uh, a little bit more broadly as well. So the way that we uh, started looking at wolf-beaver interactions was by fitting wolves with GPS collars that took locations every 20 minutes. Um, and then, then what we tried to do and, and are still doing is uh, we visit anywhere our GPS collared wolves spend more than 20 minutes. Um, so these GPS collars upload locations to a website multiple times a day. And then we can log onto the website and see where the wolf has been. And so this uh, map right here is really a screenshot once we've logged into that website. And this is a week's worth of locations from one of our GPS collared wolves this past year. And so what we do is we take all of these locations and we run it through a computer program. And what that computer program does is it identifies everywhere that that wolf has remained stationary for more than 20 minutes. So if we put all of these locations through the computer program, what would pop out on the other side is this. And so these are all the spots that wolf basically stayed in the same area. And each one of these spots is referred to as a cluster of GPS locations because there's usually a tight grouping of GPS locations there. So what we do is download all of those uh, clusters of locations onto our GPSs. We figure out a good way to get to all of them. And then we spend that day or a couple days just getting to all the clusters of locations from a single collared wolf. 
And the idea here is that anywhere that a wolf remains stationary for more than 20 minutes is a spot where it might have made a kill. And so we need to go in and investigate uh, and try to find that kill. And if it didn't make a kill, we also wanted to know what the wolf was actually doing there because we can get a lot of really great information that way too. So when we go to these clusters, um, our main motivation is obviously finding kills. And as we started studying wolf-beaver interactions, we quickly found out that finding where wolves kill beavers can be very difficult because wolves can almost entirely consume a beaver in a very short period of time, leaving virtually nothing left to actually find in the field. So this is a perfect example. Um, this is a kill that we found a couple years ago. And what happened here is there was a little kit beaver, which is a young of the year beaver, that was swimming through the stream on the right hand side. And the wolf grabbed that kit, dragged it out and consumed it in this little white oval here. So the next photo I'm gonna show is me staring straight down into that white oval and you can see what I saw. And so this is what I saw. And when you look at it, it doesn't look like a whole, not, a whole lot. You can see sort of the sort of outline of where the wolf was bedded down there. And then if you look really closely, you can actually see that there are a pair of the front incisors of this beaver kit. So it's two front teeth. Um, and below those teeth are the beaver's stomach contents. And then there's a little tuft of hair in the sort of left corner there. And that's all that was left of this beaver. And that's pretty common. Um, at these kills we find, and this is probably why studying wolf beaver interactions has also been difficult is because it's challenging to find where wolves are actually killing them and it's hard to know what's going on if you can't actually find where wolves are, are successfully killing beavers. So, so far on our project we have searched 11,816 of these clusters of GPS locations. And in doing so, we have located uh, 214 beavers that have been killed by wolves. And we found wolves killing beavers in a variety of different areas around beaver ponds. And so I'm going to talk about the various places that we found wolves killing beavers. And then this will be sort of helpful as we kind of continue on to try to understand where wolves are actually waiting to try to kill beavers. So we've found wolves killing beavers near uh, beaver dams, which is not surprising. They'll kill beavers right on the dam or sometimes just below the dam. They'll kill beavers at what are called feeding areas. And feeding areas are just uh, areas along the shoreline where beavers have been cutting a lot of trees, but there's no clear uh, trails in and amongst these trees. It's just like this big area that beavers are sort of going to town uh, cutting trees. Wolves will kill beavers uh, on and around feeding canals. And feeding canals are these little canals that beavers dig out that kind of go inland a little bit. And those canals actually help beavers float uh, logs back to their lodge. And when beavers are traveling through these little canals, they're vulnerable because there's not a lot of room to escape. So we see wolves killing them in these canals. And you can see the little white arrow is pointing to what one of those little canals looks like on a beaver pond. We see wolves killing beavers uh, around feeding stations. And what feeding stations are, are just little areas on the shore that beavers sit and they actually strip the, the sticks that they've cut. And so they'll just sit on the shoreline there, strip a bunch of sticks, and wolves sometimes will successfully be able to catch a beaver that's doing this. We will, we've also found a lot of kills around beaver feeding trails. And feeding trails are just these really well-worn trails that beavers make that go to trees that they are cutting or that they've cut and are hauling back to the pond. And so beavers are very vulnerable when they're doing this because they're going far away from water and wolves are able to catch and kill them in those areas. Wolves will sometimes kill beavers in the forest interior, so just in the middle of the woods. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. We've seen wolves actually killing beavers um, in ponds, so in the shallow areas at the end or edges of ponds. So for example, in a place like this, you can see that little white polygon. So I don't know exactly how this ends up occurring, um, but it must be really quite something to see a wolf trying to kill a beaver in water like that. We've seen some instances of wolves killing beavers at or around beaver lodges. In a few instances, we've seen wolves 
killing beavers at what are called scent mounds. Scent mounds are these piles of mud and vegetation that beavers build on the shores of their ponds. And then the beavers uh, excrete castor, which is a way that they mark their territory. And so beavers will spend a lot of time sort of building these mounds and, and wolves will sometimes catch them when they're doing it. And this is just an example of like what you might see as um, scent mounds along the shoreline. Then we've also seen wolves just killing beavers in random places along the shores of beaver ponds. And we've also seen wolves killing beavers in what we call small waterways, which are creeks um, or streams or things like that. One thing that we think is pretty interesting um, is of the 214 beavers that we've found killed by wolves, 29% of those beavers appeared to have been attacked in the water, and then wolves dragged those beavers out of the water to then consume them. And the reason that's interesting is before we started our work, it was generally assumed that if beavers could reach water of any decent depth, that the beavers are, were essentially immune to predation. And what we found is that's not the case. Um, certainly if beavers get into really deep water, they can uh, outswim a wolf and they're really not vulnerable. But in the shallower water of their pond, beavers certainly can be attacked by wolves. So one thing as we started visiting all these clusters of GPS locations that we quickly realized is that wolves were spending a lot of time bedding down around active beaver ponds looking or not looking, but waiting for beavers. Um, so we'd see wolves bed down next to feeding trails or dams or lodges, and they would wait there for sometimes eight to 10 to 12 hours. Um, and so it quickly became apparent that wolves were primarily trying to hunt and kill beavers by ambushing them. And this might not seem really all that surprising because how else would a wolf go about catching a beaver? But the thing that's important to remember is that wolves are primarily thought of as cursorial predators, meaning that they primarily catch and kill their prey by outrunning and outlasting it. They don't really use a lot of secrecy and tactics like ambushing. In fact, the work that we're doing and that I'm presenting today is really the first work that's ever systematically looked at how wolves ambush their prey. And so this was really fascinating to see wolves having the ability to do this. So, as we started to notice where wolves or that wolves were doing this, we started to record information on what we call beaver hunting attempts. And these are just the uh, instances where we see wolves bedding down to hunt and kill beavers. And so I'm going to play a video here that I took in the field that really walks through what one of these hunting attempts looks like in the field. So it's September 15th, 2019, and I'm at a spot where one of our collared wolves, B079, was attempting to catch and ambush beavers. And this is just a really great example of what wolves do and how they try to actually catch beavers. So right here behind me, you can see this aspen tree that the beavers have been working on. I'm at the end of a 31 meter long feeding trail. And wolf B079 bedded down right here. Um, so literally about a meter and a half from where it was actually trying to catch beavers. And this is generally what wolves are doing. They're bedding down and they're waiting for substantial periods of time for a beaver to waddle down this trail, work on this tree, and that's when the wolf will be ambushed. So B079 was at this particular bed for over four hours waiting for beavers. So what I'm going to do is actually turn the camera around and show what the beaver would have seen uh, if coming up the trail in 79 was bedded here. So give me a quick second here. I'm going to put my backpack in the bed, and I should note, the way we know this is a bed where V079 bedded down is because there's wolf hair all throughout the bed. So you can see little white hairs there, and it's on the, the base of that tree as well. I'm going to put my backpack here, so that's where 79 would have been bedded down, and you can see it would have been right next to that tree. The trail that the beavers were coming up through goes right through there, and it actually comes out of a little river there. So, if I was a beaver, I'd be coming up the trail like this, and I'd be slowly coming up, and hidden behind that balsam tree would be the wolf. I'd be following the trail, and that's where 7-9 would be waiting, and if the interaction occurred, the beaver would likely be dead because it's so far from the water. So, just a really cool example of this, and what we've learned about how wolves ambush beavers comes largely through documenting these spots where wolves are spending time waiting to ambush beavers. So um, 
as we started noticing that wolves were doing this, we started, like I said, keeping track of a lot of these um, beaver hunting attempts. So we would go to these clusters of GPS locations, find where wolves are ambushing beavers, and we would take a bunch of measurements on these beaver hunting attempts. So what we did when we found these hunting attempts is we measured how far the wolf chose to bed down from water. We tried to keep track, or we didn't try, we did keep track of how far the wolf bedded down um, from where it was actually expecting a beaver to be. So in this instance, how far the wolf would have been from this feeding trail that the beavers were using. We keep track of the habitat features that the wolves are trying to catch and kill beavers on. So were they trying to catch beavers at a feeding trail or a dam or a lodge or something like that. In addition, we would draw um, a sort of a lifelike sketch of where the wolf positioned itself relative to all the other pertinent details. And the reason we did that is so that we could then look at what the wind direction was when the wolf was bedding down um, to hunt beavers and see if the wolf had bedded down in a downwind position. Um, because like I said, um, beavers primarily detect predators via scent. And so it would make sense that if wolves want to ambush them, they would have to wait somewhere downwind where they wouldn't be detected by beavers. So all of this information we are collecting on these ambushing attempts or these hunting attempts was so that we could really answer this question of where and how are wolves choosing to ambush beavers. So we had a few different predictions of what we thought would be happening based on what we know about wolves and beavers. The first, uh, which I just talked about, is that we suspected wolves would wait downwind of beaver activity so that beavers couldn't detect them. The second prediction we had is that wolves would wait close to where beavers were active on land because um, beavers have terrible eyesight. So if you're a wolf, um, you probably want to get as close as you possibly can to where the beavers might be active um, because that would give you an advantage when you actually decide to attack it because it would because the beaver would have no time to know what an attack was occurring. For example, if a wolf had waited say 10, 12, 15 meters away from where it's trying to hunt and kill beavers, um, that wolf would have to get up out of its bed and race towards the beaver. And that might give the beaver just enough time to start turning around and heading back towards water. And that little bit of time might be the difference between the beaver um, getting killed or escaping. So we would guess that wolves would wait downwind of where the beavers are active, but would wait really close to where they're expecting beavers so that they can quickly ambush the beaver. We also have predicted that when possible, wolves would try to get and wait as far away from water as they possibly could. Because as the further a wolf can catch a beaver or attack a beaver from water, the better its chance of success is um, because beavers, uh, all they need to do is get back to water and they're safe. So if wolves can catch them further away from water, their chance of success increases. And then the fourth one is, um, that wolves are probably killing beavers in the same places that they're waiting to ambush them. And so we expected that, you know, um, where wolves wait to kill or wait um, to catch beavers is probably where they're killing them. So on our project, we have documented almost 740 of these beaver hunting attempts from 28 wolves. So what did we find in relation to that first prediction of do wolves actually wait downwind of beaver activity? What we found is that at 89% of these beaver hunting attempts, wolves waited in a downwind or undetected uh, position. 5% of the time wolves were clearly waiting in an upwind or a detected position. And then 6% of the time we just uh, couldn't say conclusively one way or the other. But we believe this provides pretty strong evidence that wolves are in fact taking into account the wind direction and choosing areas where beavers would not be able to detect them. The second, how do wolves wait or do wolves wait close to where beavers are actually active? So this graph here is a histogram and what this shows is um, how close wolves are actually waiting from beaver activity. So on the x-axis, is the distance that the wolf was bedded from where it was expecting beavers, so from beaver activity. And then on the y-axis is just the number of hunt hunting attempts that we found um, wolves waiting at those different distances. And so what you can see is that the vast majority of all hunting attempts on beavers 
um, occurred between zero to five meters of active um, or beaver activity. So wolves were generally waiting very close to where they actually expected beavers to come out on land. Also again in line with our prediction. So in our third one, when possible do wolves try to wait far away from water? So this is a histogram showing how far from water wolves typically are bedding down. So on the x-axis is the distance that the wolf was wading from water, and then on the y-axis is just the number of attempts at each of those distances. And what we see is that there's a lot of attempts that are really close to water, so within, you know, five to ten meters from water. But then we also see a lot of these attempts where wolves are wading um, 20, 40, and even up to 60 meters from water. And so the question is, what's going on there? Why do we see this sort of um, interesting pattern here. And really what it comes down to is that uh, most of the habitat features around a beaver pond that wolves want to bed next to are really close to water. So for example, a beaver lodge or a beaver dam or something like that, the wolf has to be close to water to ambush beavers there because that feature is right on the water. However, so, so really wolves have no choice if they're gonna ambush beavers in those areas. However, when wolves wait on these beaver feeding trails that beavers are using to cut vegetation, they have a choice of how far from water they can actually wait because these feeding trails can be 20, 30, 40, 60, 80 meters long. And so the wolf can make a decision. And so if we really wanna understand whether wolves uh, try to wait farther from water um, when possible, we need to really look at those hunting attempts that are only on the feeding trails. And so that's what we did. And we predicted that wolves should wait further from water on these longer feeding trails. And so to get at that, what we did is we measured the length of feeding trails that wolves were actually betting on. And then we saw how far uh, from water that that wolf waited on that feeding trail. So did it wait, you know, right by the pond where the trail comes out of the water, or did it wait all the way at the end of the trail where the beavers are cutting the tree? And this graph here shows what that data looks like, and I'll try to walk through what this is really showing. So on the x-axis, we have the feeding trail length, so how long was the feeding trail? On the y-axis, we have the distance from water that that wolf waited on that feeding trail. So what we see is that as the feeding trail gets longer, wolves are generally waiting further from water, suggesting that wolves are trying to choose positions further from water when possible um, so that they can attack beavers further from the water. So if this doesn't necessarily make sense, I'm gonna to try to explain it in a little bit of a different way. So what this, that line is showing or that, that data is really showing us is this. If there is a, a beaver feeding trail that's 10 meters long, the wolf would choose to wait nine meters down the trail towards the end of it. Now let's say that trail then ends up being 30 meters long. Well then on a 30 meter long feeding trail, the wolf is actually gonna wait on average about 18 meters from water. And then let's say we get a really long feeding trail that's 50 meters long then on those trails, the wolf is going to wait on average about 36 meters, or sorry, 26 meters uh, from water. And so as the feeding trail gets longer, the distance the wolf is waiting from water also gets longer. So then what about this sort of last prediction of do wolves kill beavers in the same places they wait to ambush them? This graph here just shows the percent of hunting attempts and kills in each of these different categories um, that uh, I talked about a little bit earlier about where wolves actually kill beavers. So uh, on the y-axis, we have the percent of attempts and kills in each of those categories. So we can notice that there is actually a substantial difference between where wolves are trying to kill beavers and where they actually kill beavers. The biggest and most obvious difference is these uh, hunting attempts around feeding trails. So we can see that almost 50% of all hunting attempts that we've documented occurred on feeding trails, but only about 25% of the kills that we found actually occurred around these feeding trails. So there's a big difference there. 
similarly, we found a lot of kills at in this forest interior category. So almost 20% uh, of all of the kills we found occurred in the middle of the forest. Um, but there's not been a single hunting attempt there. Same thing with this small waterway category in streams and creeks and things like that. Um, almost 20% of all beaver kills have occurred in small waterways, but only about 3% of all of the attempts that we've uh, found have occurred there. So something's going on. And the question is, what is actually driving this unique pattern? And what we think it comes down to is opportunism. Um, wolves certainly kill beavers by ambushing them, but they also encounter beavers opportunistically and kill beavers that way. And so we think that the difference that we're seeing there is because of that difference in uh, opportunism versus sort of intentional ambushing. Um, the real challenge here, however, is that it's really difficult to understand which kills are opportunistic or from opportunistic encounters and which of them are from ambushing. At least it's difficult to tell from GPS collar data alone. You know, having visual observations would make that easier, but that's just not really practical or possible in our area. So the reason that we think though that this is due to opportunism is that most of the kills that we found in the forest interior and in small waterways are of dispersing beavers. These are beavers that are not associated with a colony or pond. Um, instead, what they've done is they've decided to leave their colony and travel around looking for a habitat that they can then occupy. And so these dispersing beavers often use these small little creek networks in the greater Voyager's ecosystem like the one in this picture here, or they travel across land. And in uh, both of these habitat features, the waterways or in the forest, beavers are really vulnerable to predation because if they get uh, detected by a predator, they have nowhere to escape to. And so we think that that's why we see so many kills occurring in the forest interior and small waterway habitats. So then what does all of this really tell us about wolf-beaver interactions? I think the first thing is that wolves have at least a basic and fundamental understanding of beaver behavior. So wolves will come and they'll bed down next to a feeding trail or a beaver dam where they almost certainly can't see or probably hear a beaver, but they somehow have the knowledge that if they bed down next to that habitat feature, there is a certain probability that while they're bedded there, a beaver will come on land that they can then have a chance at killing. Not only that, but wolves choose where to wait around those features based on what they know about beavers' ability to detect them. So they know beavers can detect them via scent, but that they can't see them. And so wolves pick spots accordingly. Additionally, wolves know that their chance of killing a beaver increases if that beaver is further from water. And wolves also try to pick locations further from water when possible. I think the other thing it really tells us is that beavers are hard for wolves to catch and kill. So if you're a wolf on the landscape, you have really two decisions when you want to hunt and kill beavers. The first is you have to figure out which pond you want to bed down next to or wait at. So you have to pick a pond. And then when you're at that pond, you have to pick the right spot. So you have to wait by a feeding trail or a lodge or a dam or something like this. And I, we have really no idea how wolves make these decisions, but somehow they're making these decisions and they're spending a lot of time trying to ambush beavers and many of those attempts, they come up empty handed. Um, so we certainly think that beavers are not a very easy prey species for wolves to kill because beavers don't spend a lot of time on land. And even when wolves do encounter beavers on land, we think beavers are pretty challenging for wolves to successfully kill. But this idea that beavers are uh, easily killed by wolves once wolves find them is something that um, would, is really prevalent in the scientific literature. So if you picked up and sort of um, sifted through the literature, you'd get this, under, this um, feeling that, that wolves killing beavers is a piece of cake. So here's just a few quotes from the scientific literature. Um, a beaver's only defense is water. So once trapped on land by wolves, the beaver is doomed. That's by Meech et al. 2015. Another one by Hall 1971. Beaver are awkward and slow on land and undoubtedly easy prey for wolves to catch and kill. And then a more recent one from Slandre et al. 
On land, a beaver are rather helpless when attacked by a large predator. So all of this, again, seems to suggest that wolves should be able to easily kill beavers once they actually encounter them on land. Um, but we do not think this is the case at all. And to provide some evidence for that, I'm going to show the beginning of a video that was captured in Quebec uh, by Trent Stanger. And our knowledge, this is the only um, documented observation of a wolf actually um, successfully attacking and killing a beaver. And so there's a lot of really fascinating uh, pieces of information to glean from this. But I'm going to show the video and talk about sort of why this um, suggests beavers are not easy prey for wolves to catch and kill. But I'm going to show the video first and then I'll kind of talk about it in a bit. So you can see the wolf here and it's going to run into the woods and get the beaver. Oh, we got a beaver. Video, video. I got it, I got it. So the beaver runs away there. And you can see the beaver is trying to bite the wolf on the face. And then it tries to escape. The wolf grabs it by the tail. The beaver tries to bite it again. And this goes on for several minutes. And I'm not going to show the whole video, um, but if you want to watch the whole thing, if you go into YouTube and type in Wolf Beaver, this will come up. But I think that this video really does show that, that killing beavers is not so easy for a few different reasons. The first, which is not surprising, is that beavers fight back. So the moment this beaver uh, was attacked, it started fighting back. So it tried to bite the wolf, it was trying to run away, it was biting the wolf's face. And in one instance, uh, captured by this picture here, uh, the beaver actually successfully bit the wolf and the wolf jumped back and let go of the beaver. Obviously this wasn't that important in this particular encounter, but if this had happened closer to water, something like that occurring could be the difference between this beaver sliding into water real quick and escaping, um, or getting killed by the wolf. Additionally, this is a small beaver. I would guess probably 15 to 20, 25 pounds, something like that. Um, a large adult beaver is uh, 50 to 60 pounds, if not more. And so you can imagine that if this beaver was two to three times its size, that this encounter would be radically different than uh, portrayed in this video. The other interesting thing was that after the wolf uh, dragged the beaver out into the road, the beaver actually managed to free itself and actually ran about eight meters before the wolf caught it again and pulled it back into the road. And in this particular encounter, it, it didn't really matter. But if the wolf and beaver were really close to the edge of a pond, that sort of escape would undoubtedly allow the beaver to get back to water and successfully evade wolves. So based on all these factors, we think it's very likely that some beavers actually escape wolves after they've been attacked. And we actually have some evidence for this in the Greater Voyagers ecosystem. So since 2006, Dr. Steve Windles, who's a wildlife biologist at Voyagers National Park, has been doing a long-term beaver research project. And part of that uh, includes um, catching beavers and fitting them with little um, ear tags and then taking several measurements on the beavers. And one of the things that he takes a lot of measurements on are the beavers' tails. And every once in a while, he finds beavers that have these mysterious puncture wounds in their tails. And these puncture wounds aren't from bullet holes and they're not from other beavers. Um, and so really the only thing that, that makes sense is that these holes are from the canines of predators that have actually bitten the beaver's tail. Um, and it's not hard to understand how a beaver would get a hole like this when you watch this video of the wolf attacking the beaver because the wolf is constantly grabbing the beaver's tail and, and yanking it around. And so um, we think it's very likely that beavers with these holes uh, were actually attacked by wolves but managed to escape them. Um, and so just a little bit of evidence, I think, from our area that, that some beavers do escape wolf predation um, at least once. So while the work we're doing has really started to shed light on wolf beaver interactions and how wolves actually uh, go about hunting and catching beavers, we really think it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's probably a lot more to be learned. Um, and there's a few questions that we're hoping to answer in the coming years. Uh, for example, when are wolves hunting beavers? So we know that 
wolves know when to or where to position themselves to hunt beavers, but do they also um, primarily attempt to ambush beavers when beavers are most active on land, or do they do it during some other time? What age beavers do wolves kill? Do they primarily go after the um, younger beavers, which are probably easier for them to catch and kill, um, or do they go after the older beavers? The difference is that the older beavers are going to be larger, they're going to be the adults, but they're also going to be the ones that are spending the most time on land foraging, whereas the younger beavers aren't going to be spending as much time. So we're really curious to see what age beavers are maybe most vulnerable to wolf predation and which ones are wolves really targeting. And then lastly, do different wolves have different hunting strategies? Um, it seems conceivable that different wolves have figured out different ways to go about hunting and killing beavers. And so we're interested to see if that's the case. And if so, are there certain strategies that are more successful than other strategies? So hopefully in a few years, I'll have uh, some other really interesting results to share with everybody. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge all of our funding sources, including Voyagers National Park, the University of Minnesota, the Voyagers National Park Association, Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, and several other organizations that have made this project possible. And I just want to state that um, if you're interested in learning more about the Voyagers Wolf Project or sort of staying up to date with what we do, follow us on Facebook or Instagram, um, or you can go to our website, which is voyagerswolfproject.org. And uh, some of the work that I talked about today has actually been published in three different papers um, that are actually available um, on our website. So if you go to our website and you look underneath our publications tab, you can actually get free <coughs> PDFs of each of these articles if you want to learn more. And with that, I will take questions for as long as people have them. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Um, that was really so fascinating. And I'm just so impressed with beavers. <laughs> it's really <laughs> incredible. Yep. Um, so for those of you um, who joined us um, a little late, uh, right now we're sitting with Tom Gable, um, who is the lead of the Voyager's Wolf Project in Northern Minnesota. And he just finished his talk about uh, some unique, or not unique, I guess something we're just learning about Mm -hmm. and witnessing and this is uh, the hunting um strategies for wolves and and beavers i guess beavers trying to survive yep. so um let's get started and see if we can uh answer a few questions uh for those of you who would like to ask a question just enter it in the q a box of your control panel and we'll start with uh this one right here um how well can an average size beaver feed an adult wolf is this considered a good food source? So an average size beaver in our area, you know, probably average is gonna be 30 to 40 pounds. Uh, no, probably more like 30 pounds, I would say. And for a single wolf, I would say that is a pretty substantial meal during the summertime. So wolves are primarily um, going after beavers by themselves. And so they get to really, um, use all of that kill themselves. So if they get a beaver to themselves, that's a, a good food source for several days um, for a wolf in our area. Um, now, it gets a little bit more challenging if it's a, an adult wolf that has pups. Um, a beaver might be a little bit, uh, it might not be as good of a food source um, when you have to feed pups and yourself. But given your alternative options during the summertime, which are, are deer fawns um, or other random foods such as blueberries or things like that, maybe a beaver is a really advantageous uh, food source. Great, thank you. Um, here's another, if I understand it correctly, wolves are not hunting beavers as a pack in the summertime. Do you think they work mostly as single individuals or do they team up at times in twos or threes? So that is a wonderful question. Um, so most of the time, wolves are doing this um, by themselves. And we've got a lot of information that, that shows that. We learned this year, and I didn't have time to get into this, but we're currently working on a paper that we're hoping to have submitted here soon that actually shows uh, the breeding pair of a pack that we studied this year um, actually cooperatively ambushing beavers. Um, so that we documented eight instances where this breeding pair um, put out these beaver hunting attempts in 
uh, at the same pond, but they waited a little distance from each other at different feeding trails uh, to ambush beavers. Um, and so that was really fascinating to see that behavior. So certainly seems that um, they will, or some of them have figured out how to hunt uh, beavers together. We don't know how widespread that is right now. Um, and that's hopefully something we can document going forward. Um, is there any evidence of serious injuries on a wolf as a result of its attack on a beaver? So that's a, a, also a really good question. Um, you know, we, it's hard to pinpoint any injury being the result of a beaver necessarily. Um, I have no doubt that there's some wolves that have probably gotten really um, seriously injured from getting bitten by a beaver. And, and I'm guessing there are wolves that have probably died from getting um, uh, attacked or, or bitten by a beaver. We've never had any of that that we've known about in our study area. We have seen wolves that have large gashes across their face and their muzzle, like lacerations. They look like a, a razor just slid open their face. And the best guess we have are um, that's a result of, of beavers attacking a wolf uh, or fighting back, I should say. Um, so if you go into our Facebook page, there's a video from uh, probably a few months ago showing this female wolf that has all these injuries throughout the summertime. And one of them, you see these, these cuts on her muzzle. And we suspect that's probably from a beaver. Wow. Um, let's see, is hunt success increasing with age slash experience of the wolf? That is something we don't really know the answer to. And part of the reason we don't know the answer is because we don't have the ability right now to track wolves, um, you know, for continuous or for multiple summers in a row. So we're usually able to study the predation behavior of one wolf uh, during that summer. And then our collar can't take the really intense GPS locations anymore because it runs out of battery. Um, and so unless we can recollar that animal, which is uncommon, we really don't know. Um, you know, it seems that there's certainly some, uh, that that seems like it might be plausible or possible, um, but we just don't really have the data to say anything right now. Got it. Um, when do beavers generally disperse? Is there a connection between opportunistic hunting success and a certain time of year? And do wolves hunt beavers in the winter? So starting with the dispersal question. Um, so beavers in our area um, seem to sort of have two different, you know, main dispersal times. Um, the majority of dispersal appears to happen in the spring following, um, once, uh, following the ice melting. So we see a big surge in May of dispersing beavers. And that's when most of these um, kills of dispersing beavers happen in May. And so if you really look at like a graph of, of when most of the kills occur, you see this big peak in May and then it kind of drops down from there. And that's just because um, there's a lot of beavers in our area and there's a lot of them dispersing. And so wolves are just sort of finding them and killing them when they can. There's another sort of like, um, lesser peak in the fall. Uh, we don't see as much of a response to wolves killing beavers at that time, um, but certainly that May area is the um, big one. And then what was the second question or the second part? Um, do wolves um, hunt beavers in the winter? Oh, in the winter. Um, Wolves have been known to opportunistically catch beavers that are sort of caught above the ice during the winter time, but we've never seen any um, evidence that they are, you know, going after beavers intentionally, probably because there's very few beavers that are actually out on the ice um, and that are available. There have been some observations of wolves on Isle Royal in sort of uh, March when it's starting to thaw, uh, where wolves are bedding down next to um, these feeding trails that beavers are making through the snow when it warms up. So you know, there's cer certain instances where they might, um, but we don't see it a lot in our area. And we have yet to find a beaver that's been killed by wolves during the winter time here. Aha, and kind of in regard to that, does, um, do you anticipate that your results will hold true for other areas with high beaver um, slash wolf density? That is a, a, a really a wonderful question and something that I think we're really interested in seeing. Um, I don't, I honestly don't know. I mean, I would suspect that it's probably similar, but it's, um, you know, everywhere is different. I don't know how much of the behavior we see in our area is a result of uh, maybe um, behaviors that are sort of unique to this population of animals. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I don't really know. I certainly think that wolves ambushing beavers happens throughout uh, a lot of the areas where wolves and beavers are co-occurring, or at least where beavers are large food sources, because there's enough anecdotal observations from a variety of different um, systems, ecosystems, where wolves are showing this ambushing behavior. Um, but whether or not they wait for beavers, like we've documented, uh, we're not sure yet, but it would be really cool uh, if someone did some work and, and sort of showed that elsewhere. I agree. Um, lots of questions. Um, uh, how long does a radio collar last with the frequent downloads of data? In other words, do you have to capture wolves frequently to replace batteries? Yeah, so, I, so our collars take locations, like I said, every 20 minutes, which is 72 locations a day, and that really churns through battery quickly. This is probably another reason why the summer behavior of wolves has not been studied all that well, is because the collar battery only lasts about one summer season when the locations are being taken that frequently. Uh, meaning there's a lot of effort trying to get that collar on a wolf and then you have it for seven months and then the collar basically um, stops working or runs out of battery and then usually we have a little mechanism that causes it to drop off. So um, so usually we're not getting a lot of information on these wolves throughout their lifetime but just a little short snippet of it. Um, we have been fortunate in some instances to <clears throat> recollar animals that we had collars on previously um, but that's pretty uncommon and, and pretty challenging to do. Um, so generally speaking, we're following, you know, different animals every year that we uh, didn't know about the previous year. Makes sense. Um, how, oh, that's the, not the one, I apologize. Here we go. Do wolves hunt beaver more than other species? Um, that's a hard one to say um, because it's really hard to know how much time wolves are investing hunting, say, uh, deer, which are their other main prey species. You know, with beavers, it's really easy. We can, we can understand where they're bedding down to ambush them because it's, we can see where they're waiting and, and where they're spending time. When wolves are looking for deer fawns, you know, it's hard to quantify that. What does it mean for a wolf to be looking for a deer fawn? Um, where does it, what kind of habitat does it have to be in? Um, are they always looking for deer fawns? Um, so it's hard to say. There certainly seem to be, you know, wolves will spend a lot of time going after beavers, whether or not that's more than the, uh, the amount of time they put in going after other species. Um, it's probably something we won't really ever know that well. Has it been discovered if beavers are able to use a warning system for other beavers in the area if they get back to the water? Did they, sorry, was that warning system? Is that correct? Correct. Um, I don't think anyone knows, uh, to be honest. I certainly think that if a beaver escapes um, a wolf, it's probably going to come back to the pond and I, I would imagine make quite a, a ruckus uh, alerting the other members um, of the colony. And I'm guessing also once an attack starts, I'm guessing there's probably quite a bit of sound that comes out of that encounter just to guess. Beavers have uh, vocalizations that they make, and so it seems likely that the other beavers would know pretty quickly what's going on and know to get away from land. Um, a lot of people are asking about beaver behavior. Sure. Um, I'm just going to try to condense some of these questions. Yep. Um, one is, do beaver hibernate in the winter? Um, and also, do they live under the ice in the winter? How does that work? So beavers do not hibernate um, like a bear. They're just locked under underwater um, or under the ice. So beavers build food caches in the fall, and these are just piles of sticks that they've cut on land, and they build it in this big floating, uh, basically, mat. And a lot of that then sinks underwater, and so that when the ice forms, beavers can actually swim under, grab the branches on the bottom of that pile, and chew on those. Um, they'll also eat aquatic vegetation like the roots of lily pads and things like that during the winter time. So they're certainly active. Um, when there's like a crack in the ice that beavers can actually get out and uh, onto the ice and, and cut trees, they will. Um, we've seen beavers out and about in the winter time. It's just um, they don't have a lot of opportunities for that to happen. Um, did I answer the, the, both those questions? Yes, thank okay. you. 
Um, and also a lot of questions about how much of the beaver wolves are eating. Are they consuming the mm. whole animal? People notice the teeth that, that you spoke about. Just how much of the beaver is being eaten? So I would say pretty much everything except the skull. It, well, I should say back. The skull they don't eat because that the skull is just of a beaver is just so strong and, and um, bony that I don't think they have the ability to crack it, or at least if they did, it's not worth it trying to bite into those teeth. Um, but we oftentimes don't find the skull because wolves take those all over the place um, with them. I don't necessarily know why. We found this, we found skulls, you know, seven, eight hundred meters away from a kill where the wolf just went off with the skull somewhere. Um, the, the typical remains we find at kills are the stomach contents of the beaver, um, so wolves do not like eating those. And then we also find the castor glands, which are really these like scent glands that beavers have um, around the base of their tail. And um, wolves do not uh, like eating those either, probably because the, it's just got a very strong um, pungent taste, I'm guessing. Um, so those are typically what we find. Um, a little bit of fur, um, but most of the time there is, they've eaten everything else. They'll eat the legs, the vertebrae, um, sometimes on the small kit beavers, they will eat the skulls because um, the, the skulls are softer. The adults, I just don't think it's possible for them to crack into those things. Okay. Um, also, a lot of people thanking you for your presentation. Oh, thank uh, you. Very interesting information. Um, and someone asks uh, or mentions that a lot of your study was looking at hunting attempts. And if you could please explain how you define attempt. Okay, so an attempt, we have a, um, a technical definition, which I generally don't get in the weeds uh, all that much about, but it, we would consider a hunting attempt to be two or more consecutive GPS locations um, within 25 meters of each other. So the location has to be within 25 meters of each other. And then half of those GPS locations in that attempt have to be within 15 meters of fresh beaver activity. Um, so it's kind of a, uh, and it's a little bit more complicated and nuanced than that, um, but that's sort of the, the general, um, the general um, definition, I suppose, of it. Well, thank you for that. Yep. Um, and uh, this question asks, and we'll just do two more questions. There's, they still keep coming in, but <laughs> it's getting late. Yeah, that's um, okay. Good. What is the actual process of killing the beaver by the wolf? You mentioned that the beaver doesn't really have a neck to grab onto. Are they biting into the soft underbelly? I, we have no idea. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how they actually kill them. I'm guessing they probably go for the neck. If you watch that full video, you'll see the, um, the wolf is, is still grabbing the beaver by the face by the end of it. So maybe that's, you know, they wear the animal down, they exhaust it, and then they bite to the neck. Um, hard to say for certain. Um, yeah, so, so we don't know, really. Um, and that would be, it's going to be a really hard one to find out unless people start getting really lucky and start filming a bunch of wolf beaver encounters. Wow. So the video that you shared with us, how, I'm assuming the beaver um, was the wolf successfully killed the beaver. How long did that take? That took about four and a half minutes, um, which is, I suppose, all things considered, not that long. Um, but there, uh, I do know someone from Wisconsin DNR who once got really lucky and actually observed a wolf um, attacking a beaver. And he said that the encounter took almost 20 minutes for the wolf to actually kill the beaver. And he said it was uh, a ferocious sort of in, uh, atta attack and sort of battle between the two. He said it was was quite uh, impressive to watch. Wow, uh, I can't imagine. <laughs> um, and last question, um, what is the biggest, um, the largest beaver you ever saw out there? I wanna say, so I don't know the biggest that I've ever seen, but I know, um, like on the project that Steve Windles leads, um, you know, he's had beavers that I think approach 65 to 68 pounds. Um, so that's a really big beaver. Our, you know, our typical female wolf in our area is 57 pounds and, the, or no, sorry, 58 pounds. And the typical male that we catch is like 67. So um, that's, a, the beaver's basically bigger than the wolf, which is 
pretty nuts. That is nuts. <laughs> um, Tom, thank you so much. Um, we've covered a lot of questions. Just wondering um, if there's anything else you want to cover before we wrap things up. Uh, no, I, I know people still might have questions. And if that's the case, um, shoot me an email or uh, go to our Facebook page and leave a message or something like that. And I'll try to get back uh, to those as soon as I can. Thank you so much. And everyone, I do encourage you to find Voyager's Wolf Project on Facebook. Um, amazing. People have even been mentioning here in the questions. They really love following your Instagram feed as well. Um, YouTube and their website, which is www dot voyagers wolf project dot org and uh, you can even contribute to the project uh, you'll find a link to donate via the website um, and also if you'd like to learn anything uh, more about the wolf conservation center our scientific webinar series or the 50 wolves who call the center home uh, I encourage you to visit our website at www.nywolf.org so Tom thanks again for offering us your time to discuss uh, this really fascinating topic. Um, and for everyone else, uh, thank you for joining us. And I hope you join us next time. Have a good night. Thanks, Maggie. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.